So, Bill, okay. I, um, I guess while I have you, we'll, we'll stay with you for a second. Um, all right. You know, I, I'll let you get your perspective, then I'll put my own two cents in. Okay, a few times in the last week, I've heard Rank Brain come up uh, yet again. And I'm sure when we get to the end of year stuff and looking forward to 2018, we're going to hear more of it. And we've also heard some hummingbird things. So I guess my question to you is, can you uh, – <laughs> I feel like such an asshole. Can you at <laughs> least try and summarize the, the two of them and whatever differences there may be within – like, yeah, I see, that's why I feel like an asshole because – but can you do it in some sort of short order for folks as far as sure. pick one, start with and go to the other and, and essentially what we know about them and what they potentially might be doing in the background? Both of them are aimed at Google getting a better idea of what a searcher means when they enter a query into a search box or, or they speak a query because they also contemplate conversational queries. Uh, so Hummingbird uh, looked at all the words in the query uh, to try to get context for uh, what the query was about, what the person was trying to find out, what their informational or situational needs might be. Uh, Hummingbird did that in a slightly different way in a much more technical sense. It used a lot of um, machine learning approaches and used something that uh, Google refers to as word vectors or thought vectors to try to understand the words that are used in a query and to see what terms might be related to those and then see what, what's available in the world that it could respond to with that greater understanding of what a query might be. So they're both attempting to rewrite queries in a more meaningful way. Right. You know, I, I because, you know, again, I, I Neil Patel and Christine Sassinger, oh, God, she's going to kill me. Um, both had sort of bank brain things lately, so I had to you know, start thinking about that. Then, obviously, you and I ran into the hummingbird thing with Chase and stuff. Um, so I, I was kind of going back and, and, and looking at them. So, yeah, yeah. I do get the sense it's it's a lot of like query classification kind of stuff. Um, I think Hummingbird they actually touched on some of the conversational search and, and I think some of that, you know, seemed to play into it at the time. <clears throat> but I don't know if you had to. Like I guess to me the fundamental difference is it seemed like Hummingbird was more reformatting a query in query classification kind of stuff and then even reformatting search result based upon you know that. Whereas even more so, I think it's almost like brain brain was an extension of that, but using like the whole neural network approach for what they called at the time was disambiguated or disambiguous queries, meaning stuff that we may not know the searching intent kind of thing. There's a, a white paper that came out from Google last year called Viperpedia, which they made up out of uh, query log information from Google to try to get a sense of things like what's the canonical questions that people ask in queries. When they ask a question, how is that shaped? What words do people use to ask certain questions? Uh, if they understand things like that better, they, they can answer those queries quicker. Yeah. All right, anybody else want to chime in? Doc, I know you've done a few miles with me on these, these topics. So, Actually, I'd say that uh, Bill covered it pretty completely. Well, I was just pushing around. Uh, uh, all right, see what it is. All right, well, uh, I guess before we go, has anybody else here got a topic, question, or anywhere they wanted to go? Because I got a list of shit to keep us busy. But if somebody else has somewhere they wanted to take things today, I'll leave the door open for the moment. Well, are we going to talk about that rank brain penalty? <laughs> okay, let, let me just put this to bed. <laughs> because we kind of joked about this before the, the session. And since we kind of started there, for all you folks out there that, that – don't want me up your ass. Rank Brain and, and, and Hummingbird 
don't affect rankings, at least not in a traditional sense you'd think, meaning you can't do something on your page, you can't do something with your site or throw more, you know, you know, co-current. <laughs> I love that stuff, Bill. Um, it's not about that. It's about, yes, if, if a Googler says to you, and you, you say to a Googler like John Mueller or whoever, say, uh, does rank brain change uh, affect rankings? And they, you say, well, it's the number two ranking factor. Google said so. Yes, because it's reorganizing and reformatting the query itself within its own internal work. So that certain is going to change. So does it affect rankings? Yes. Is there anything you can do to affect its rankings? I don't think so. Is that your feeling with it, Bill? Because that's what I see. It, it doesn't seem like it's really focused on uh, uh, things that people can do to uh, improve the rankings. If you if you uh, start thinking more about structured data and about making sure your page is about the concepts and topics that you're writing about, uh, you're you're doing the best job you probably can. It'll increase your odds of, yeah. of that affecting you. But and in, in a scoring mechanism way, I don't know. You know, you you highlighted that that uh, post with Hummingbird, and you know, I mean, I've I've gone through the word to vec and all this other vector stuff, and yeah, it's not as much a, a scoring boosting dampening effect as it is a reorganization effect of the rankings. Which okay, that does affect rankings, but it's not a direct, you know, scoring boosting dampening effect. You know, at least that's what I found. Google's come out with uh, something they refer to as context vectors which is a short way of saying some words have more than one meaning and we're going to look at knowledge bases for the different meanings see what words show up on those and use some of those words to give context to pages that are about those different meanings that's you know and i think that's really important that everybody needs to understand the fact that when you try to understand what rank brain is doing you gotta understand that vectoring has become such a major part of, of search that context is now king not content per se context if you can't maintain a focus of context on the page you're not going to get as much benefit from the search engine well and again we were we were talking a bit in the green room beforehand and and i was talking about cycles and how they kind of you know measure out who gets what and you know the, the vector also you know from what i can tell bill with the, architecturally for them is a save on you know cells and load time you know uh, computing power you know by by using the vector graphs and so on it if anything there's there's a certain element of infrastructure that's that's at play not just relevancy and, and quality results 